So we've seen geometrically how to calibrate the T prime axis. The one second mark on the T prime axis uh, is connected to the one second mark on the T axis by a hyperbola. Same thing for the two second marks and so on and so on. They're connected by these different hyperbolae. So what I want to do in this video is um, come up with a, an algebraic formula for what this point would be, what the space-time coordinates of this point are according to Anna. So here's a picture for that. We've got Beowulf's clock. This is a world line for his clock. And Beowulf reads zero here, and then a little while later reads one second here. And would like to know in the um, at rest frame, in Anna's frame, what are the space-time coordinates of this green event? So um, to do that, we'll use uh, our old friend, the metric equation. So I'll write that down. The space-time interval squared is a time interval squared minus the space interval squared. And so this distance, this one second, as I argued in the previous video, this is a space-time interval. Here is an event, here is an event. There's a single clock, the one that Beowulf is carrying with him. It's inertial, it's present at both events. That's measuring the space-time interval. So um, the space-time interval for this is 1. And then um, that space-time interval is going to have the same value in any inertial reference frame. This is frame independent, just like distance is coordinate independent. So this distance is going to be a delta x, and then this here is a delta t. So I know that Anna, she'll have a delta x, a delta t, she would calculate the same space-time interval. So let's see. I guess I'll plug in 1 there for the time being. All right, so I'm interested in delta t, but there are two unknowns here, delta t and delta x. Uh -huh. However, delta x and delta t are related because I know how fast um, Beowulf is going. Just as in the previous example, he's going at beta, and when it comes time to put a number in, I'll say beta is 2 fifths. So, um, let's see, but delta x squared is beta uh, delta t. Sorry, it shouldn't be a squared there. Delta x is beta delta t. Distance equals rate times time. Beta is how fast the um, Beowulf is going, including his clock. How far does the clock go in a time interval delta t? Speed times time gives you distance. So then I can square both sides of this equation, remembering to square the beta as well. I have to square everything. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug delta x squared into this, um, uh, into this equation up here. So I'm going to have 1, well, 1 squared is 1. Delta t is going to stay delta t minus beta squared delta t squared. And so now what I want to do is do a little bit of algebra to solve for delta t squared. So nothing too crazy, but this is going to take a couple of steps. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to factor out a delta t from both terms, because there's a delta t in both of these terms over here. Or sorry, a delta t squared. So to see that this is true, imagine going backwards and distributing delta t. Delta t squared times 1 is delta t squared. Delta t squared times minus beta squared minus beta squared delta t squared. All right, so I want to get delta t all by itself. I've got this term in parentheses. I'm going to move that to the left by dividing both sides by the term in parentheses. So then this is going to give me this. Alright, so 
So this is looking like progress. Um, the last thing I'm going to do, because I want delta t, not delta t squared, is I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get that delta t is 1 over, and I have to square root this, 1 minus beta squared square root. So this tells me how to calculate the time interval, or the, yeah, the time interval in Anna's frame for one second in Beowulf's frame. All right, so let me um, introduce a little bit more notation and uh, put a number, uh, and plug in a number here to kind of get a feel for how this works. So, um, let's see. So this quantity, 1 over 1 minus beta squared, it's going to come up a lot in this unit. It comes up a lot in special relativity. And so it's conventional to give this a different name. It just saves some ink and some writing. So this 1 over square root 1 minus beta squared is usually just denoted gamma. So this is another lowercase Greek letter, the letter gamma. Um, and gamma is, is a number always greater than 1. Let's think about why that's so, then we'll plug in a number. Beta is a number between 0 and 1. It's a special relativity speed. 1 minus something um, between 0 and 1 is going to be a smaller, a number between 0 and 1. Square rooting a number between 0 and 1, still a number less than 1. 1 over a number less than 1 is greater than 1. All right. Um, let's plug in, in some numbers, and, and or a number, and see what happens. All right, so what's gamma if beta is 2 fifths? Well, let's just plug in and see. 1, 1 minus 2 fifths squared. Um, and let's see, we could evaluate this directly on a calculator. We could also have a little bit of fun with fractions, but it's fine to just jump to a calculator if you want. Um, 2 over 5 squared is 2 squared over 5 squared. So that's going to be 4 over 25. Um, 1 is just 25 over 25. So I'm writing this because I want a common denominator. If I have 25 downstairs for both these fractions, you can just subtract what's up top. This is 1 over uh, 25 minus 4 is 21. And then 1 over something downstairs is the same as, um, let me just write it rather than trying to say it. This is the same as 25 over 21. 25 over 21 is a number larger than 1, bigger number on top. Square root still going to be a number larger than 1. Uh, 25 divided by 21 and then square root, I get about 1.09. So for this, I get gamma is about 1.09. So let me conclude by summarizing and just stating this result a little bit more generally. So first, what this 1.09 means is that the time coordinate in Anna's frame for one second in Beowulf's frame is 1.09 seconds. And so I did this where um, using, using a delta t prime of one second, but this would hold for any time interval along this axis. And so the general result is 
that um, delta t equals gamma delta t prime. So again, we had a delta t prime of 1, we could do it with 2, we could do it with 3, and it's always the same factor of gamma, where gamma is given by this. So following this video is a quiz where you'll get a chance to um, practice this stuff, and I think you'll see um, how it works, and that it's not so bad.